Okay, today is March 21st, 2017, and right now at 9.15 p.m. in the foothills, we have a temperature of 54 degrees. The relative humidity is 96%. We've got a barometer reading of 29.99 inches, and the, uh, the dew point is 53 degrees. We had uh, overcast skies starting off the morning, and around, uh, I think it was around 1.30 in the afternoon, it finally started to rain. Uh, prior to that, it was uh, it, it would rain for about maybe two or three minutes and stop, and then maybe a half hour later it would start to rain again for about five minutes and it would stop again. This uh, cycle went on for since the morning hours, and then finally around uh, I think it was around two o'clock, two fifteen, uh, the rain actually started and didn't stop, it kept going. So uh, it's still uh, misting. It did rain very lightly uh, most of the afternoon. Nothing, uh, nothing to speak of really. Uh, the total so far is five sixteenths of an inch, five sixteenths, and uh, that's pretty good. Uh, <clears throat> so we're looking at the uh, Northeast Pacific water vapor loop, and we can see a giant hole here from a transmitter in the middle of the jet stream, right here. Okay, so this is not natural. Is there any uh, any scientists or meteorologists that want to take a stab at explaining to their viewers on television how it is that uh, high pressure just appears right in the middle of the jet stream on a continual basis? That's what we have right here. And look at the uh, the IR map, the effect that's having. Of course, this is all uh, moving right into uh, Southern California. This flow right here. If we look at the jet stream, we can uh, confirm that. We have the jet stream map right here. This is the uh, 300 millibar jet stream map, 30,000 feet. And uh, this is the flow right into California. And of course, right here we have a transmitter which is uh, putting high pressure right down on top of that uh, moisture flow right into California. And uh, of course, the result of that is that. The moisture in that jet stream is evaporated right here. And so what does that mean? That means that there's no there's not much water vapor coming out of the back side of this to flow into California to drop rain. That's the end result. And what is making its way up into California is being sprayed over. And we'll take a look at that right now on the Modus Today map. <clears throat> this is a uh, map for, for today. And we can see the uh, chemtrail haze, all this crap has been completely blanketed. <clears throat> this uh, chemtrail haze is blanketed over the uh, moisture field that is moving in into uh, California. We've got the uh, San Diego area right here and the border. And of course, we have a spliced map from two different uh, time periods. But we can see this uh, gray haze, which is uh, blanketed over uh, most of the uh, moisture moving in and that's why the rain really never got going all day today it's been misting basically a heavy dew uh, it did rain uh, a little bit very light rain uh, and of course uh, the reason for this is because of the uh, chemical aerosols that are being sprayed we can see a area here that's uh, been blanketed right here and then we have some a uh, clearing you actually can see some natural clouds uh, right here, which are not blanketed over. All right, now, <clears throat> uh, so that's the situation with the Modus Today map. Let's go look at the Doppler map right now, and we can see that there's just not very much rain going on in, in Southern California right down here. We can zoom in a little bit. There are a few spots up in the mountains near Big Bear, which uh, there is some uh, rain. Okay, this map is now frozen up. There we go. So we have some rain still near Big Bear City over here near uh, Yucca Valley, but the place is pretty well dried out. Now let's go back and look at the uh, let's look at the uh, the flow pattern here in the uh, Southern California, the uh, Southwest infrared map. We can see a lot of moisture moving in. This has all been sprayed over. This should be bringing a lot of rain, uh, several inches of rain. Actually, looking at the flow pattern, we go to the bigger IR map, we can see that low pressure system. This is the jet stream here uh, moving right into uh, Southern California. 
and we can see a lot of outflow right here where the uh where that transmitter is is uh right on top of that jet stream and of course the uh the nightly news the weather reports they don't explain that there's actually high pressure right on top of this jet stream flow that's not ever explained but we're showing it it's right here how does this happen on a right in the middle of the jet stream flow Fritz Coleman, uh, Dallas Rains, uh, Rubenstein, some of you guys, why don't you take a stab at this uh, and tell us why this is happening? All right, so we want to hear it from the experts, the so called experts. Okay, here we have a storm. This is, I, I believe, a 987 millibar storm system. This is moving uh, to the east, right towards the west coast. With a giant frontal system, we can uh, actually see some manipulation on that uh, weather system. Let's take a look. Uh, oh, we can't see it here. Uh, there's part of it right there. But you go back to the uh, the uh, water vapor map. There's actually two lows in this uh, vortex here. There's two lows. Take a look at the uh, surface analysis map right here, and that's a 987 millibar. A storm system right here moving east there's actually there's actually two lows here so this might be saturday's rain right here storm system and then off california we have a trough shown and a cold front there's high pressure all mixed in throughout here of course from the uh those microwave transmitters which is uh which are breaking up the jet stream uh evaporating the moisture in the jet stream All right, now we're looking at the western U.S. water vapor map. We can see that detail. This is what's bringing uh, the little amount of rain that we've had, this little segment of, of moisture that's been chopped up by this transmitter right here. So this is also being uh, <clears throat> chemtrailed over. And uh, tomorrow we have a uh, forecast for some thunderstorms, but I don't see uh, with all of this activity in the spring going on, that's, that's not going to happen. They're going to have to uh, pull back some of this uh, spraying operation, this chemtrail spraying, get rid of that, and pull this transmitter off of here, and we'll get some real rain, kind we used to have back in the 70s, 60s, and the 70s, and the 80s. You can see all that outflow here, I mentioned. High pressure being installed right, right in the middle of the jet stream. Okay. Here's the water vapor map for the uh, southwest. You can see all that uh, water vapor moving into Southern California. All right, we saw that. Here's the uh, sea level pressure. We can see what they've got here. They've got high pressure indicated right here off of Southern California. We've got a high pressure zone right here. At the surface level, this is the jet stream flow. This is probably really not accurate. This is this should be up at the 500 and 300 millibar, since this is a satellite boring this giant high pressure a hole. That should be shown more likely to be shown on the uh, three and the 500 millibar maps. Here's the 500 millibar map. Looking at this, you see basically clear sailing right into uh, Southern California, but that's really not the case. This is not really not accurate, I don't think, based on what we're seeing. You see a lot of squiggly lines here, too. You go back to the uh, water vapor map. As I mentioned earlier today, uh, since the early morning, we it was trying to rain. The weather was uh, spitting a little bit. We'd see rain and it would stop after a couple of minutes, and then it would repeat. Finally, like I say, around two two fifteen or so, it started to rain steadily. But this is the problem here, and then the spraying over this little amount of rain that's moving in this moisture field, which is preventing the lift. All right, uh, so that. And then we have, uh, this is the uh, 
this is a thunderstorm <clears throat> thunderstorm system right off of Mexico, which is uh, looks like it's being blown apart, but there's not a whole lot of detail in the uh, the visible light map. There's there's some photoshopping right here where we should be seeing uh, some blast activity, and we do see a little ring right right there. But they've got this area photoshopped, and I don't know if you can see that on the uh, on the video because of the exposure of this camera. But uh, let's stop this. Right here. Right here is where they're hitting that area. And they've got it photoshopped over with this uh, overlay, so we can't see that detail. And this is not showing up very well on the uh, camera, I can see that. At any rate, uh, this area is being blown apart. You can see a shock wave right there. And of course, the uh, color diminishment is visible right here. It goes from a purple quickly and it just implodes right here. That is being targeted. We're starting to move into the time of the year where uh, the monsoonal. Uh, we start to see a northbound movement of a lot of this uh, thunderstorm. This uh, moisture moves north, and once it gets near uh, Upper Mexico, they start to really target these thunderstorms, like we saw uh, a couple of days ago in that video, right south of New Mexico. We'll keep an eye on this, but uh, the pattern is changing as we move into into spring. We're going to start to see uh, beginnings of hurricanes forming, and that's what's going on here. Hurricane season doesn't really start until, I think it's the middle of May, but uh, actually hurricanes can form at any time of the year now in these uh, warm waters off of uh, Mexico and Southern California, especially down here near uh, Central America. So these uh, transmitters are at work all the time, all year, all year round. Okay, so that's it. Um, just leave it right here and do another update tomorrow. We'll hope we uh, get some more rain. That's it.